Yo, monkeys, it's me, D-D-P, the king of Bada Bing, the master of the diamond cutter, the three-time, three-time, three-time world champion. And you, monkey, well, you, you're listening to W-N-S. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. You're listening to the official Wrestling News Source podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com or find us on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler Bear, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler Bear. I'm Doug. And we welcome you to episode 197 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News uh, Podcast. You can find us on Stitcher, Player.fm, <laughs> and Beyond Pod. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Uh, we're on Twitter, uh, at WNS Podcast, at WNS underscore Daniel, Woo! at Tyler underscore Adrian. Yeah. So there you go. So welcome to the show. Got plenty to talk about this week and dive into some feedback, talk about we're all give you our hell on a cell predictions, total divas, maybe. Maybe we'll see. Uh hot topics and of course QA as well. So welcome to the show. How you guys doing? Tyler, are you getting pumped up for Friday? I yeah. know you are beyond excited. Yeah, to get my PS4 finally. Yes. I'm gonna join join the ranks. Uh, I know I've been talking about this. I'm just going to throw it. I know it's a wrestling podcast, but I'm going to mm-hmm. talk about PS4 just for a little bit. Okay. If you don't mind. No, nah, go for it. throw it out. I know we've been talking hey. about it. I'm super pumped. Yeah. I'm still trying to decide if I can get the Destiny bundle or not. I'd say yes. Just because these guys have the Destiny. Mm-hmm. The, the Destiny. Destiny. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it is And I Destiny. want the white PS4, yeah. but I know... One of my other friends is like, just wait a month or so. No, I'm get not, it now. I need it now. Don't, you're, we're done waiting. Yeah, I need the PS4. It's time to get it. Mm-hmm. Time to purchase. I, so, yeah. I want. I can't wait for 2K15. I can't mm-hmm. w- wait since I have a Vita. The remote play, I think that's what it's called. Very cool. Where I can, uh, the console can be on, but I can uh, play on your PS. Yeah, whatever's on the screen, you can play on your Vita. Nifty. So. Very cool. Doug, how about you? How you doing? Good. Yeah, hanging in there. Hanging in there. All right. The good stuff. How's it hanging with you? I'm doing quite well, thank you. So the left. No, did no well, no, I'm not gonna disclose that. But uh yeah. Started the uh the advocare challenge like you did not too long ago and it is very tough. It is. Um it's really tough because I'm a picky eater to begin with. Let's say you're and very now it's like picky eater. Now it's like, okay, you can eat all this. And I'm like, well, I don't eat that. Well, then your choices are extremely limited. So it's like, turkey. well, have you tried certain things? Have you tried turkey bacon? Yeah. You like it? I mean, I ate it. You eat you know, uh, egg whites? Bought it. Yeah. I've been, okay. I've been making egg whites for breakfast. And uh, that. You like tuna? No. Okay. No rice, no beans, which are like key ingredients apparently in like every meal that's Advocare friendly. What? Rice and beans? Yeah. Like everything never, that I've I don't looked eat up. stuff with rice or beans. Everything that I've looked up as far as like, here's something that you can make that's oh, delicious. Oh, the, uh, the, like, whole, the meals and stuff like that? I'm like, you yeah. mother... So. Turkey chili? Yeah, see, I'm... I don't know about that. It's not that bad. Gerald made yeah. it. But I mean, I'm not a picky eater, though. Mm. I pretty much eat anything. Except for lima beans. That fucking sucks. Yeah, I'm not eating beans. I'm not doing it. So, been drinking a lot of water. Been having to go to the bathroom, like... Well, you're times. also doing the cleanse stage. Yes. So that you're going to go to the bathroom a lot. Getting all that out. How many times have you shit today? Do you really want to know that? Yeah, we want to know. The people the podcast wants to know. Uh, twice, but I've had to go and I've had to go pee like six or seven times. So it's more of a piss thing than a shit Yeah, thing? you're flushing and you're flushing it all out. So I, I mean I can handle peeing a lot. I just don't want to have to shit that many times. Yeah. I think the hardest part about it is the location of the studio is surrounded by fast food chains, and I can't have any of that. Like, that is extremely tough. It's like, oh, man, we got a meeting in 20 minutes. I better run to Wendy's and get some. Oh, no, I can't. Now I have to think about where I'm going to go. And it's like, oh, I'll just go get a turkey wrap down you know, down at Jason's Deli. Oh, but they add all this stuff that I don't eat. <laughs> Jason's Deli is good. Not to- Jason's Deli is good. You're talking but, about to put on there, right? But it's like. I can't have ranch dressing, which is the only dressing I like on salads. 
You know, yeah. I can't have you know cheese, which I like that on a salad or why can't or, you have or a potato. It's just high right. high in sugar and all that kind of stuff. Sugar it's very and sodium. strict. It, it, it is and tough. Light ranch. Yeah, but even then, you know how you said that your coworkers yeah. gave a shit. They they did me, but they, you know, they I mocked think- me for like the first day. The first day they gave me hell about it. They were like, "Oh man, I smell you know oranges." And that's because I was like, I "See, was, I'm not a picky eater." And then by the mid midpoint or a little bit midpoint, I kind of got used to all the stuff, so I just kept on doing it. It's yeah. it's repetitive, but and then I also did yoga too, and mm-hmm. then all that stuff. And but then, I did find what. Out- I, f- I did find out that I can go to Smoothie King and get some some stuff from there. Yeah. So I'm like, thank God. I think what really motivated me is I kept I saw results and too, and that that's what kept motivating me because also uh, when I would work certain uh, like football games, they would have the sub sandwiches and all this, and all, all those guys would eat that and stuff. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely. I think it's more mental challenge than anything else. It's like, can you tell yourself, no, I'm not going to eat this? Yeah. It's really difficult. And yeah. One thing that she, that that was hard for me, at least, and um, was the second cycle when you do burn and refuel days. Mm-hmm. Burn is no carbs. Mm. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a good day for me. Fuck it's what so, y'all are talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather have tacos than abs <laughs> any fucking day. Yeah. Hey, you know what I tried the other day? I tried burger, uh, Dairy Queen's tacos. What do you think? It was all right. All right. Yeah, they're pretty good, man. Get out. You're not allowed to talk about that. I think, looking-wise, they look better than Jack in the Box tacos. Well, of I course. I felt like they tasted pretty good. I mean, they're a different taste. Yeah. But I like them on the same level as Jack in the Box tacos. Interesting. Hmm. How, how about you, Doug? Favorite, favorite fast food tacos in rank? Oh, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Taco Cabana doesn't count because we don't have one that's nearby. But I've eaten the Taco Cabana of times to yeah. rank them. Okay. Well, you we can have a secondary list where it's like that is included. But first rank, first list is asterisk. I still love like, I still love Taco Bell's tacos. I just do. Yeah, I'll probably go. <coughs> it depends on what time you time of day you go because sometimes you go. If you go too close to lunch rush or you go too close to dinner, like they, Taco Bell has this like real sloppy and like rushing and like too, too greasy. Like I expect some, I expect a healthy heaping of grease at my fucking Taco Bell and I'm totally fine with that. I understand what I'm getting myself into, but there are certain times of the day, if you don't avoid those times, like you get like, it's almost like they're scraping the bottom of the shit out of you, you know? So Forgot to replenish. If you if you get fresh, fresh Taco Bell soft tacos are my favorite if mm. they're fresh. But you know sometimes like you can tell the meat's a little too orange and shit like that. You know. Yeah. Like, Dude, Dairy Queens they seem like it's not it's not really greasy. Theirs are that's why I like Clean. theirs so much. It's like yeah. it's never dripping with grease. See, I'm a soft taco guy too, so that's mm. why they go up. Uh, and uh, I probably ranked. yeah, so I'd probably go with uh, yeah, I'd probably put Dairy Queen next. I like Jack in the Box fine too. Uh, more so for convenience. But. Jack in the Box is great if it's like two o'clock in the morning or something. They yeah. taste good. They look horrible. They yeah, they never look good, but they taste awesome. So Greasy and stuff. you also have to throw in the sauces and stuff like that. Sauce. So. Sauce. So good stuff. Interesting story about Taco Bell. When uh, before I started the Avocare challenge or whatever, I went there and got you know my normal meal. And I told them to give me a root beer. I pulled up. And uh, they gave me the drink, and I tasted it, and I was like, oh, this tastes, you know, kind of funky. Um, and so I, you know, told the told the lady, I was like, hey, can I switch this out for, like, a Pepsi or something like that? And she was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And uh, as as she went to turn, I happened to glance at the vending machine and, like, or not the vending machine, but the drink dispu- uh, distributor. Um, and you know how they'll have, like, the little red lights to indicate that they're out of a certain drink? Yeah. Root beer was out. I'm like, if I can <clears throat> notice this... Why didn't you? Oh. Well, why would you? They have one behind the counter. Why would y'all be looking at the same one? I was in the drive-thru. Oh, I okay, that. okay. Oh, uh, I know we're getting totally off subject or whatever, but... Uh, Are we? <laughs> yeah. Taco Bell has a Starburst Frutista Freeze. I haven't tried it. I See, haven't tried it. It was out, though. 
I, I, always, I like to stick to the basics when I'm in the... the Baja Blast Mountain Dew one is pretty but good. But I love Starburst. That's why I want to try it. Yeah, I'm... See... But what flavor? Can't, oh, strawberry. I don't know that I want, like, a, that sort of drink with my, like, Taco Bell, you know? I just want, like, a fucking cola or a Mountain Dew. Mm. The Baja Blast is a interesting fucking situation for a drink that is almost always exclusive to their restaurant they're always fucking out of it and i guess that's maybe why <laughs> yeah. but you think they would stock a little extra of blah, yeah. blah. hey here's here's one extra box of this stuff right. take care of it so. i mean they did bottle it and can it for a little while but mm-hmm. i think it's back to just noah got a surge did you see that <laughs> yeah i saw that are you gonna drink any if he offers no. a tea no i don't i mean i may he was like apparently it's supposed to be the same formula as back in the past but it's like I think I remember it differently, but it doesn't taste as great. I was like, well, I think me and you talked about this. Mm-hmm. It was the, what, the original energy type of drink yeah. before energy drinks. And plus, they have better stuff out there yeah. now. They've most owned most likely. I mean. Yeah. And plus, as you grow up, your tastes evolve. Yeah. So, yeah, of course it's going to taste different. Yeah. And surge. Because, I mean, the cells in your body replace every, you know, every once, you know. I regenerate. Well, they continuously change. So after, like, I think it's like a seven-year span, you don't have the original cells in your body that you did, like, seven years ago. So, of course, you're, it's going to taste different. Hmm. So just a little interesting stuff. So welcome to the show. Yeah. Going to go. dive on into some feedback. Uh, first bit of feedback we have is from Mixer saying, I think Vince wants to give Dean Ambrose Roman Reigns' spot. And um, it's an interesting theory. I mean, Roman Reigns has been out with an injury. Uh, you don't want a guy who's injury prone, not saying that Roman is. This is like his first major injury that's taken him off the spot. But um, do you guys think that uh, they might switch it up and, you know, maybe Roman's not ready, but they might see potential in Dean Ambrose? Well, re- read me the phrasing one more time. I think Vince uh, McMahon wants to give Dean Ambrose Roman's spot. Well, I know. don't. I mean, I don't think so. If Vince wanted Dean Ambrose to have – his spot, then he would have had it before he was before um, Roman Roman was even out for injury. He would have had the spot. He would have been the first guy getting the heavy push mm-hmm. if Vince wanted him to have the spot. I think they reluctantly and begrudgingly put like hooked their carriage to to Dean Ambrose and saying, "Well, Brian's out, Punk's gone, Roman's out. He's the guy who's sort of over right now, and so Rock's we're gonna roll out. right." <laughs> So yeah. I don't think that he was a guy who was who was chosen. I think he was a guy who they felt like they had to go with. Yeah. In a lot of ways, they did have to go with. They tested, you know, injury created an opportunity, and they gave him a shot, and he's taking the ball and run with it. But if Vince wanted Dean Ambrose to have uh, fuck, Roman Reigns a spot, he would have had – we wouldn't even be calling it Roman Reigns a spot. It would have been Dean Ambrose a spot. Yeah, it would have been the spot he rightfully deserved or something. Um, so, but thank you for the feedback. Thanks for listening. I like I'm, tra- I'm trailing off. Can I, you understand me? Yeah. My voice is coming, like, sort of getting out of whack. Been, been dealing with cold or something? Yeah, a little bit. I just, I don't know. I know I'm sort of inaudible as is because I have a weird, stupid voice. I just, hopefully people are understanding me. Nah, you're good. All right. We got you. We got you. Uh, next bit of feedback we have is from Bad Pants saying, Bear Ass Rake is too close to Bear Ass Rape to be used as a promo. That's fair enough. I mean, <laughs> but I would argue if you could tell the difference, then it was just fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was I wanted to do um, a rape joke. Um, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I wanted to do. Uh, uh, I'm gonna. Um, what was it? <sighs> Back rake your ass. That's what I was gonna say. But that sounds. You did say. I, I said, said bear rake. rake. Uh, but it still would sound like maybe back rape your ass or something like that but uh i was trying to do like back rape like a back rake back <sighs> like i'm gonna back rake you but it i don't know i guess i was saying stuff with bears earlier and then i was yeah. like bear rake your ass i don't know that's <laughs> close enough well there you go but uh but thank you for listening Rape's not funny no it's not 
Uh, next bit of feedback we have is from Richard saying, Cena versus Orton will be a classic at Hell in a Cell. Yeah, Ambrose beat Cena at Raw, but I think Orton and Cena have great chemistry, so it's a win-win for everybody. Cena haters won't be able to bitch when Cena would have beaten Rollins, but now they can bitch when he beats Orton. Ambrose, Rollins, Rusev, Reigns, and all the NXT superstars are the future, but the future will have to wait a little, lo- a little while longer. HLR, word life, people power. <laughs> I really wanted to, uh, for this pay-per-view, pay-per-view I wanted power. to see Cena versus Rollins. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the poster's name? Richard. Richard, I feel like, Richard, I feel like, uh, not that, I feel like that you're posting with some sort of agenda, as if you have, like, to prove to us that Cena's an okay dude. And I promise you, if, if anywhere to talk about John Cena on the internet, you are in a safe place here. <laughs> because, you know, I've been, you know, trying to get people to understand, you know, what what value Cena has for, like, how long have we been doing this fucking podcast? A long time. Four fucking years? Yeah. So maybe three and a half years for me, I've been saying this shit. And, like, so I, I feel like I love to hear, like, feedback i want you to i want you to weigh in i want to hear your opinions but i feel almost like as if you have an agenda that you're trying to prove something to us i feel like you're preaching to the choir not only are you preaching to the choir you're preaching to the oldest fucking lady in the choir. i mean i don't know you know like i feel like you know maybe you're trying to prove a point to us that we probably already are like sort of uh on par with at least me i mean i don't know again like i, I don't want you to stop given feedback or waiting. I you just think feel, he maybe has a hidden agenda or something? Or something? Well, I'm just saying, like, if, if he's feeling that he's got to prove something about Cena to us, I, chances are I already fucking feel that way maybe a, a while ago. So Is he is he trying to lure haters? I don't know, man. Seeking, you know, seeking that spotlight? I don't know, man. Possibly. <laughs> Never know. Who knows? So, uh, but yeah, so... Uh, Thank you all for the feedback. We certainly do appreciate it. Time to dive on into the go-home show for Raw. Uh, this was very promo-heavy. Not a whole lot of matches, but a couple good matches on there, I, I think. Um, we kick things off with the Authority, talking about, you know, the upcoming pay-per-view and the main event for the evening. Um, not really a whole lot accomplished in the promo. It was kind of weird. Um, but, I don't know. Uh, the, the hardest thing about doing the show a day late is that the memory definitely starts to fade. Yes. Um, so I don't remember too much about this. I think I came in a little bit late anyways. Um, but it, was there anything really to, to talk about? I know they continued sort of the storyline of the Rollins and or, yeah. uh, Orton tension. A few things. A few things about this. One, Seth Rollins wants to be known as the undisputed future of the WWE as his nickname instead of Mr. Money in the Bank. Yeah. Which, let's hope that doesn't catch on, because that's the fucking dumbest nickname I've ever heard. <laughs> so, hopefully Just he doesn't get his heat. way. Right. Hopefully he doesn't get his way, because that sounds stupid. Um, also, they sort of establish, or not establish, but Trips says that the winner of Orton Cena is going to be the de facto number one contender to Brock. Hmm. Um, which is fucking weird, because yeah. Cena lost to Ambrose... To be, get put in this, not that they called it a loser's match, but this loser's match. Consolation prize. And this consolation prize matchup is going to be the number one contender. Now, I can see, it makes sense to me from a storyline standpoint for Triple H to stack the deck in his boy's favor. But then why didn't he just fly it out and say, Orton's the number one contender? Why? Right. So why undercut Ambrose's victory? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Because uh, you have to have that star power. I get maybe they're trying to add a lot of people are blah about this Cena Orton matchup again, and maybe yeah. they're trying to add some weight to the matchup. And it's like, first off, it's a consolation match. Second off, we don't but have. But it's not, which is weird storytelling. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, second, we don't have the WWE champion in this pay per view. Right. So it's like, we got to have a reason for someone to tune in and be like, well, how about a number one contenders match? Well, you don't want to do, you don't want to have Rollins as the number one contender. I don't think Ambrose is going to be that guy for the number one contender spot. 
So, hey, let's do Cena and Orton, and they become the number one contender. Which I get. Yeah. I get I get making either Orton or Cena the guy to challenge Brock again, but that's just lazy storytelling, in my opinion, to go about it that way by naming the loser's match is going to be the number one contender to the world title. That's lazy booking to yep. me. It's like the winner of this match is going to face Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell. And then the other guy is going to get to have a chance to be number one contender. Yeah. It's just lazy to me. And the last thing, Kane's out there with the, the group, doesn't say shit, but hits his pyro at the end, which I thought was fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, this is my time to shine. <laughs> now hit my music. Yeah, it doesn't say shit. It's in a, he's only casually referenced, but he gets his pyro at the end. That's weird, right? <laughs> The authority hath spoken. So, Whatever. maybe that's what he was going for. I don't know. But that takes us into the uh, the first matchup. Uh, you know, we get to see uh, the Usos and Sheamus teaming up to go up against Gold Stardust. And uh, instead of Miz, it's actually Mizdow. So, uh, Mizdow gets his chance um, as Miz hops on commentary. Um, it was an okay matchup, you know, for, for what it was. Um, Ms. Dow ends up getting the pin, which was, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but, um, they ended up getting the victory. What did you guys think about it? I sort of loved, um, on commentary, Miz had this, like, stroke of genius. And you know how the fucking commentary is trying to just mm -hmm. fucking browbeat any poor bastard who mm -hmm. can sit next to them. Uh, Miz actually had this fucking awesome comeback for them where they're like, well, Miz, don't you think that Sandow is, um, he's... People are reacting more favor favorably to Sandow than you, so doesn't that mean that they like him and not you? And he's like, well, in essence, Sandow is doing everything I do, so in essence, they are all cheering the Miz <laughs> whenever, for what he's doing. I thought that was fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, big ups to Miz for that comeback. Yeah, very good. So, um, yeah, I don't even... It was, you know, something to, I guess, tell and, the story. And Miz also celebrated as if he had won himself. Which was kind and of then awesome. Sandow yeah. sold it. He was like, "You won! You won!" Yeah. <laughs> that was that was pretty com pretty comical. So um, I don't I don't know how I feel. I guess the best way to go about it, if they're going to have him replacing him in the matches, is just to have no one acknowledge it. Just act like it's okay for the Miz for some reason. Mm -hmm. It's almost like if you don't call attention to it, it almost works better. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the, they were all sort of like, oh, "Is this what we're going to do?" Mm -hmm. Is know. this your favorite thing to see Sandow do, like, compared to all the stuff he's done so far in WWE? I mean, I've never been as high on Sandow as a lot of people have, so I feel like it's the most entertained I've been by him. I feel like, I don't know how much legs this has, though, you know? Yeah. And I feel it's like once they split him apart, where is he going to go? Well, I think they're clearly going to build to him versus Miz. Like, maybe Sandow's the guy who's I getting just, success out of this and mm -hmm. like i hope they don't jump the gun though WWE is good well, jumping guns and I, stuff i felt that way at first but then like the more i think about it is like i don't know how long they could draw this out even so i don't know yeah but then it's like you know similar to miz and uh and alex riley like once this feud's over what happens then so i don't know i'll we'll just have to see how it how it all plays out in the uh, in the coming weeks, but the uh, the next matchup we got to see Alicia Fox going up against AJ Lee, uh, Paige, and of course in the uh, the corner of Alicia Fox. I uh, don't remember too much about this matchup. It's probably going to be the case for a lot of these matches. Um, AJ lost because she was looking outside the ring again. Yeah, because uh, they made it seem like Paige and Alicia Fox had a little tussle, pushing each other, a little shoving contest, and. Uh, and Paige threw Alicia Fox back into the ring and then sort of caused the distraction. And uh, Alicia Fox got the roll-up win. You guys realize that AJ and Paige have been feuding since the day after WrestleMania? Wow. Yeah, that's, that's true. Although AJ did take that time off after WrestleMania. Sure, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So, but still, that's a long time. That is a long yeah. feud. And, but it... it <sighs> It's so bland as for... Well, they don't put... They, I mean, I guess... they. I don't know. I don't know that I feel comfortable saying they've put focused on it, even though it feels like they've maybe put the least amount of effort um, that you would have to put into something to, to focus on. You yeah. know what I mean? But uh, I don't know. 
just, I guess like I don't, it's not really fair to say they put some focus on it just because they've stuck with the same thing for so long. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean they just you know if if that rumor that came out or whatever whoever said it about the cast of Total Divas not being able to win the uh, the Divas Championship, if that is actually true, if that is something that's that they put into into policy, there are not a whole lot of options for challengers for for the Divas title. Well, Stephanie like denied that in the interview, which doesn't mean that it's not true. Right. However, I don't think that's the reason AJ's not on the show. No. And it's not the reason that everyone thinks well that she's the wrestler and they're the divas. It's because her fucking private life is CM Punk and yeah. she can't be on the he can't be on the fucking show like everyone else's man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that too. <laughs> but I mean like you know, if if they don't want whoever is on Total Divas, the only people that leaves is like Tamina and Emma. So, yeah, I mean, they've denied it, and so I don't think we've seen any real evidence that that's the hard and fast rule for it yet. Mm. I mean, the reason is pretty stupid. I mean, the continuity errors is not a good reason. I don't think. Yeah, because they don't really focus on it anyway. Mm-hmm. So. Or if anything, I mean, they don't focus on the in-ring stuff so much in the show. Or if anything, they could have one of the Divas win the title and just hold it until the episode airs. And then the next episode, they lost it, you know, fast forward two months later or something. I don't know. But anyways, Alicia Fox ends up getting the victory. And um, speaking of Alicia Fox, she will be joining the cast uh Total Divas in the next half season or whatever it is also along wait who's the other there was two of them page page and page is going to be joining as well so i don't know i think that they Look, some of them are not Tyler, gonna... i can only fucking take tj and nanny's fucking bullshit for so much longer <laughs> you gotta get some fresh blood in there yeah but then <coughs> also all they're gonna have so many girls that they're not gonna focus on it's still gonna be the the bella show to be honest with you well because I mean, sadly, they're a focal point because of who their boyfriends are. Yeah. Not that that's right or anything. I'm just but saying. For but for someone yeah. to be add on to the show like Rosa, she hasn't been on that much. Well, she's been okay. Look, I missed this this week's two episodes. She's on the second episode, I think. But uh, I mean, she's been on a fair amount. She's only been on for like four weeks, and she's been on every week. No, there was one week or one or two weeks she wasn't on there. I mean, maybe you're right. Anywho, we got a couple backstage segments uh, with Randy Orton talking to Triple H and uh, and then going to talk to Seth Rollins. He was unhappy that Seth Rollins had, you know, spoken for him or suggested a match for him. Which bothers me, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because it doesn't jive with what, for me, it doesn't jive with what they've told me about Seth Rollins and what Seth Rollins has told me about Seth Rollins. Because... Trip says, hey, you should be thanking Seth because this is all his idea. And mm-hmm. he's like, okay, I'll do that. I'll thank him personally. He goes and talks to Seth Rollins. Rollins was like, yeah, man, you know, I'm just looking out for you. We're on the same team. And, you know, if you just so, you know, happen to be Brock, then, you know, I'll be waiting. Like, the future will just sort of take care of itself now, won't it? Show it, flash in the case to him, saying, I, I intend to beat you for the title. Yeah. Now that You do all the dirty work, and I'll just clean up the mess. Right, which I think doesn't jive with what they've told us about Seth Rollins because Seth Rollins is the guy who fucking fought who defected from the winning side to Mm -hmm. the losing side in Mm -hmm. secret because and the the best like reason we were given was that he was some master manipulator who was manipulating the situation the whole time so if he so he doesn't strike me as the guy who like flashes his fucking hand if he's gonna he's gonna do it then he's not gonna talk about it because clearly he didn't show any indication that he wasn't a solid group with the shield, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, any more than anyone else. Right. So I don't know. It doesn't really jive. I, 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 uh, I don't know. It just bothers me. I don't think it works. And if any, like it would work better for me if he was just like, yeah, man, bro, it's from the same team. High five. And then he would just stab him in the back later. I think that yeah. would work better with what we've known about him or what we've been told about him. Maybe they think that's like too subtle for like fans to pick up on. Maybe they don't think you would get that. Probably. Possibly, but it, I mean, it doesn't make it better to to dumb it down. They like to it, forget their right. own history to begin with, so I don't know. Man. Pretty nuts, but uh, we got to see Randy Orton come out, cut another promo. Um, 
talk about the city, of course. Got to get that heel heat. Um, he's joined by John Cena, where they go back and forth for a little bit. And then uh, Paul Heyman comes out and says, well, y'all both forgetting one thing. You know, the person that y'all are going to be facing, whoever wins this match, is going to be Brock Lesnar. So, uh, you know, and that leads to, uh, you know, Cena looking like he was going to give an attitude adjustment to Paul Heyman, decides otherwise. Randy Orton counters with a uh, with an RKO from out of nowhere, Vine, and uh, and then delivers one to Paul Heyman as well. So, anything to really take away from it? <clears throat> I mean, not really. I felt like uh, this was like the Orton show because he's been in like fucking eight segments up until this point, you know? Yeah. Which I guess they're, it looks like they're probably going to start Start the transition. Uh, yeah, start the transition, focus on him. He's got a lot of play over the whole meme and everything, so mm-hmm. I guess they felt like they had to. Which I think they exercised, like, an insane amount of restraint only having him RKO two people and only yeah. in one segment. But, I know uh, a lot of people were <laughs> like, oh, how great would it be if he just came out of nowhere and started just delivering RKOs, like, stage hands back, you know, back in the locker room. Or, yeah, I don't know. think that would have been that great at all. I Triple H's personal driver or I don't know. I wouldn't. I, that's just not my sort of humor. So I don't yeah. know. I don't get it. But, Come out uh, of nowhere. I mean, I get the vines. The vines are fun. They're cute. I get it. But I mean, <laughs> like, if they were like to just have him like going around, I think they would be taking it, the entire. It'd look a little too hokey. It would be taking the wrong message from the popularity of the vines, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. So, um, what uh, what are your what are y'all's thoughts, um, on Cena for the second week now, second or third week or so. Uh, saying, you know, you're going up against the guy who runs the place, referring to himself. I mean, is that, you know, that's not really typical Cena that we've seen before. He's sort of adding something to it. But, you know, is that sort of a cockiness or, you know, what what are y'all's thoughts on it? Uh, I mean, I haven't really, like, put a lot of thought into it. I mean, just my knee jerk after hearing you say that is, Maybe he's just trying to add a little edge to mm-hmm. that he thinks people may want, or you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It's something new, people. Like yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a little weird, but I didn't, you know, not like, hey, that's super weird. But. Yeah. Super weird. So, uh, but yeah. And so, you know, Orton did a good job. Cena did a good job. Paul Heyman did a good job as well, all talking about the past you and the it. present. And they're going to be <laughs> facing each other. So, uh, so yeah, so the next matchup, we got to see Rusev going up against Big E. Um, kind of a short matchup. We all kind of knew where it was going to go. Rusev ends up getting the victory. Um, and then, uh, you know, he's calling for his flag, and it uh, turns out he does not. And, uh, you know, Big Show appears on the uh, on the Jumbotron and seems just giddy as a schoolgirl laughing. And then uh, says, hey, you know, let's talk about the real red, white, and blue and down comes old glory, the American flag waving. And uh, my first was re- my first re- first reaction, goodness, uh, was you know this is exactly what we talked about you know weeks months ago uh, during Rusev's feud with uh, Jack Swagger that they would do something like this, do the old switcheroo um, to to try and get a a rile out of him. Um, and it looked like uh, Rusev was going to go and. Uh, tear the flag down similar to how Big Show did the Russian flag but then a uh, US soldier uh, tried to get in the ring and got kicked by Rusev um, because of it but we kn- I mean, we know it was a plant uh, just based on how the camera work alone um, handled that situation but uh, the fact that you don't get work kicked whenever you get in the ring you get yeah. shoot fucking punched yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know what are y'all's thoughts on on this particular style of you know increasing the feud, using the flag, getting swaggered, uh, using a using a military you know as a plant? I mean this to try and get a ruse out. This of This sort of stuff like just doesn't work on me. Period. And I've talked about it kind yeah. of a lot, so there's not really a lot of need for me to retread. But I feel like this segment could have been, although. It's weird to say that it could have been more effective because I feel like they're getting people invested in this, and mm-hmm. uh, that's good for them. I'm just not ever going to be able to be invested in it. Yeah. But I felt like it would have worked better if the guy really got caught up on the ropes, like trying to get in the ring. And that's fine and all, but like 
the way that it played out because he got caught up on the ropes trying to get in the ring, like Rusev had to do this like stutter, like he he went to go for him, mm-hmm. then he stopped and reset and sort of like faded back a bit. And then once the guy was finally able to clear the ropes and Rusev was no longer near the fucking flag and he still like had to grab like at the flag or whatever. Mm-hmm. But Rusev wasn't even in that position anymore because he had to fade back. Yeah. And it just made everything come off like awkward and like uh sort of like if the guy hadn't tripped up, if they would have done it smoothly, I could see it being a little bit more effective. Mm-hmm. But for me, it just didn't. It was never going to work, but it, it could. It, I think it could have played out a little better. And But uh, it just, I mean, it's just a tough break. He just got his fucking leg caught up on the rope trying to, like, roll in or whatever. Well, they also had that security guard who was, you know, trying trying to restrain him or whatever. I didn't see that. It, to me, it just looked like he tried to roll, hit his leg, trying to roll in. and then No, fucking... they tried to make it look like an actual jumper. Like, he hopped the barricade. Went to went to slide in and the security, you know, wrangled him. And he okay, was, he was trying See, to I kick out. I didn't notice the guy on the floor. I just saw the guy that was in the who met him in the ring and yeah. like hold it. Okay, so maybe that was all part of it. But it's still, his to me, his once he got in position to reach for the flag, like Rusev wasn't at the flag anymore. So why was he grabbing at the flag that was no longer in danger yeah. just so Rusev could kick him? It looked weird. It played no, out weird. The way that I saw it was okay. Whenever they have situations like this, they might have him go off to the corner mm-hmm. you know so to the, so that they can focus on him instead of showing what's happening you know because whenever that actually happens they'll cut to someone else they'll right. you know they won't show that so that instantly i was like okay you know this is you know this is a plant obviously um so plus it just ties so heavily into the theme of what yeah, they're doing you know yeah i mean i get it you know you want to show the military um you know being proud and you know, you're not going to disgrace the American flag. Um, but I don't know how I feel about that. To me, it just came off so poorly because the guy was like reaching for the flag as if to stop Rusev or to save the flag when the flag was clearly no longer in danger. And Rusev mm-hmm. was backed far away to set up with a kick and it just came off so like sort of hokey. Yeah. I don't know. How about you, Tyler? I didn't see it. Oh, okay. Um, so that, I mean, you know, Big Show came out afterwards. Are you seeing like yeah. shitty camera work? Is like they didn't mean to catch Rusev, or are you just saying? No, like whenever there's a jumper, um, I know they legit don't show them if it's like a right. real thing. Okay, okay, I thought you may yeah. have been saying like it was maybe just it would have came off better if they had better camera work because they didn't intend to show Rusev Rusev back off like that. No, I think maybe he did. Like you know that was part of the try and sell it okay. kind of thing. It was like, oh hey, look, I'm over here now. Look at me, ha ha ha. You know. Um, but I well, it didn't look like confident like that to me. It looked like he was like, I'm going to, okay, no, I got to reposition mm-hmm. to make this look good. And Maybe. I, I think, you know, you might've been catching that, but I was, I was, you know, watching the, uh, the, the soldier be detained and stuff like that. So I think maybe him doing that was like, okay, the eyes aren't on me right now. Right. So, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't expecting the watchful eyes of Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hide from me, Russo. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So next up, we got to see uh, Brie Bella going up against Summer Rae. Um, this time, Nikki was backstage watching the match instead of being on the stand uh, on the stage. Um, short matchup. Brie Bella gets the win and the yes chant. And I don't know about you guys, but it felt like the yes chant was like less than it has been in the past. You know, like fans were like. Okay, why are we here? You know, we don't care about this match. We don't care about you. We're just doing it because of who you're married to. So, I don't know. I mean, they realized. Like, yeah. It's like, we don't have to yes for her just because no. she's doing it. So, I mean, I know she wants to make it seem, they want to make it seem like she's over with the crowd. But, I mean, her matches are dead, you know? Like, it's just, okay, you're in a match. What do you do? So... I don't know. What are your thoughts, Doug? Um, I don't know that I have anything to add. To what you said. Okay. So, uh, so after that, we got to see a uh, another promo from uh, Dean Ambrose coming with a giant bag out to the ring. Back it up. I want to talk back, about. Back I want. I want to talk about this Cena walking on Ambrose watching the Cena Evil movie with the okay. popcorn. All right. Pretty stupid. Yeah. Totally fucking hated it. Mm. And. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate, like, for once being pandered to because 
But generally, they're pandering to some fucking local sports team that I don't give a fuck about or some fucking movie that I don't give a fuck about or some stupid TV show that I don't give a fuck about. But today, they decided to pander to me, or Monday, rather, they decided to pander to me and my people. And for once, I can appreciate that. But the type of people we are, if you're going to fucking pander us, pander to us, you better fucking get it right or it's worse than <laughs> than not having pandered to us at all. So they go for this Superman-Batman thing, which really fucking... You know, you know, I don't know, chafes my ass or some fucking saying. Grinds your gears. Yeah, so this. So Ambrose says, like, uh, you know, you're Superman. You know, you're big, you're tough. You got that square American jaw. He's like, but me, I'm Batman. I just like to punch people. <laughs> and this is like the effect of what he says. I don't know if this. I don't know. This is this really rubbed me the wrong way for a couple of different reasons. One of them being. I don't know if that was Ambrose's line or a line written for Ambrose, but that shows a fundamental misunderstanding of who Batman is. To say <laughs> Batman's just a guy uh, who like who likes to punch people, right? Batman was a child who witnessed his parents murdered in front of his eyes, who is driven to the core to do what he does today. He is not a ri- just a rich guy who woke up today and is like, well. I'm fucking, I just want to punch somebody. I'm, I'm fucking rich. I can do anything. What's cool? Punching people. Okay. If I punch bad guys, <laughs> I'll, prob- yeah. I'll probably get in less trouble. So that's what I'm doing. I'm punching bad guys. And that if sh- I'm wearing a mask, they won't know who it is. Right. They can't arrest uh, me. That's just like a fundamental misunderstanding of who and what Batman is. So don't fucking pander to me if you're going to fuck it up that bad. <sighs> Another thing is, like, as he's seen as leaving, he's like, you know, you don't really strike me as Batman. You're more of like the Joker. And he's like, and then obviously Ambrose does the why so serious thing. And um And I know a lot of people compared his promos to that of Heath Ledger's Joker. Well, that though that's that's good and well and fair because there was definitely a hint of, of that and definitely some influence taken from that in what he was doing. But Like, don't, first of all, like, I don't want to be told, like, that, like, don't, that's too on the nose. Like, don't say, hey, guys, this is what he's trying to do. Do you see that this mm-hmm. is what he's doing? Like, don't fucking, yeah. don't be that <laughs> fucking direct about it. Don't put the fucking. Oh, he's right. like the Joker. Right. Like, don't be that fucking direct. Like, be some fucking subtle about it. Don't be like, hey, guys, just in case you didn't get it, he's driving a lot of, um, influence from the the joker like that's what it's a part of what he's going for with his character like don't be that fucking direct and second of all don't fucking don't have no understanding of batman if you're going to reference <laughs> batman and even more so like i get this is going to fade into what we're about to talk about and like he's not just referencing joker he's referencing a or he's not just getting influence from joker he's getting influence from a very specific joker the heath ledger joker mm-hmm. which is fine you can Google, everyone was saying about this shit about him before he ever got signed. And there's a lot of evidence in his promos from that time period. You can, they're out there. You can go and watch them and see for yourself. It's true. But there is a fucking, like, what makes Heath Ledger Joker work is that he can be a little zany. He can be like a little, like, sticky and a little, like, schlocky and a little slapsticky because he can contrast that with stark, like, starkly contrast that with like brutal violence in the next scene and that's what makes that joker work because he can be like oh blah 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 blah, blah and then he can fucking stab someone in the head with a pencil like hey do you want to see a magic trick like Ta-da. yeah that's what makes that fucking joker work dean ambrose is not afforded that luxury dean ambrose can never starkly contrast this schlocky bullshit that he's doing with enough creepy violent shit to make that work like the joker can mm-hmm. because the joker's just not saddled with that those rules right so basically what you're saying is this is the this is the influence so this is sort of what he's going for but we're taking half of what makes that work so well out of the equation yep but he gets the other half well it doesn't fucking work like that you need like one plus one equals two not one equals two you're like right. you gotta if you can't starkly contrast the fucking schlocky bullshit with the 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 crazy weird violence then mm-hmm. you don't it doesn't fucking work that way. Then Joker's neutered. He's not, he's just some weird guy who makes dumb jokes. He's not a, a killer. You got to be concerned about like it's one. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Right? Yes. Like it doesn't work if you don't fucking have both. 
And Ambrose can't have the other thing that makes it work. So don't point us directly to what you're trying to do, knowing you can't fucking do it. And doing like, you know, hammer, making the dumb Joker jokes like he was, like he's like, oh, I saw this in my, you know, whatever. That was so terrible. Yeah, look. Mm-hmm. Just Those because, were visual gags, not. Yeah, so you're going to dismantle a mannequin. Okay, that's not fucking like. That'll show him. Yeah, that's, that's, that doesn't work, man. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It doesn't. That was so terrible. <sighs> Speaking I'm... of like other shit, we've been saying like the prop comic shit for weeks too. And that's when mm-hmm. they're like. I was like, oh, let me give you a hand. Oh, you think I that saw they saw this. his stuff on the internet? Like, hey, try to do this? No, because if they actually saw it and was like, hey, do this, he would do it. Not, hey, we're going to give you some knickknacks, make puns, and take this mannequin out there. Like For a fringe guy, he's he's increasingly more manufactured and more phonied up every fucking week he gets more fucking ta- like more fuck you know just like that fake crazy like i'm fucking uh, just bugs yeah. the shit out of me. i'm crazy yeah uh. fucking no subtlety to what he does he's just getting right. fucking worse every week yeah <laughs> i mean it's just that was it was so bad That's they're terrible. just fucking killing the guy i mean mm-hmm. man i don't know if it's him or them or That's both horrible it's just not good. It doesn't fucking work. Yep. It does not. So, uh, so yeah, Seth Rollins comes out, and uh, I think you said something about it on, on the podcast page. Or, no, it was uh, it was in our group message. We were like, you know, what Rollins was saying took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, when we, you go back to the first fucking week that he started all this crazy shit. Like, we we were like, yo, what the fuck? Is he a prop comic now? Is it Gallagher? Is he Carrot Top? Like, literally the words out of my mouth like i was literally typing a joke out on facebook <laughs> about it and i deleted it because rollins just said my fucking joke I was like, all right fuck you then he stole your material well now i'm not saying that i'm just saying like i mean you know you read your mind yeah and knew what you were gonna say i'm just saying if it's that apparent then like you know maybe you don't fucking do it that way yeah so um i don't know it's it was bad but the saving grace in this promo was uh, Mick Foley coming out to surprise the audience. The audience, you know, popped pretty hard for that, and it was good to see him. Um, and, you know, they used him the right way. He came out and said, you know, I've I've got history with the Hell in a Cell. I know the importance of it. My life is in two phases, pre-cell and post-cell. So, you know, this 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 match will change your life. Uh, you know, he's like, you know, in any other matchup, I would, I would say that Rollins is going to be the guy. But since it's hell in a cell, I'm saying that Ambrose is my is my pick. So, um, what do you think about uh, Mick Foley making it a surprise? Well, I mean, Fo- Foley's always good for a pull it out of my ass promo that's serious enough to like, even though if it doesn't make a hundred percent sense for like him to try to be saying what he's saying, like he he's got that passion. He's just he can make it happen. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's just that good of a talker. He's just that good of a serious promo that he can just he's trying to he's there to add weight to the match and he can do that even if he doesn't have a whole hell of a lot to work with which he didn't yeah and so he's just that fucking good that he you know he can make you think it's a lot heavier now just because he was there mm-hmm. and it really isn't but you know that's what he's good for he know? added importance to it well, I mean, he because I mean, the winner of this match gets nothing <laughs> I mean, he did, he did, though. I mean, he did the best he could have fucking done. Mm-hmm. And Foley's fucking... I'm not shitting on Foley. I'm saying, like, no one else could do that but him. Like, he's the right. guy who can make that, you know, out of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, good stuff from Mick Foley. I don't know what they were thinking with Dean Ambrose. Um, he's so. a lunatic friend. Yeah, but what does that really mean now? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, next matchup, we got to see Cesaro going up against Dolph Ziggler. And I actually... I enjoyed this matchup. Um, and I enjoyed the matchup, especially because we didn't have like a quote finisher move. Um, you know, Cesaro caught the big uppercut on Ziggler and was able to get the, uh, the one, two, three. So, uh, who knows if they're going to try and incorporate that as his finishing maneuver instead of the neutralizer. But, uh, um, I enjoyed this matchup. How about you guys? Yeah, it was good. It was fun. The, I mean, the, the thing that's a drag about this kind of shit is that they've, 
it means nothing. So I mm. feel, I mean, it actually means nothing. So they can't make you feel like it means anything. Yeah, I there's mean, no importance anymore. Right? When Zig- you book the champion to be losing every match. Yeah, Ziggler has he won a match since he fucking won the belt? Yeah. Other than the belt, I don't yeah. know. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just weird. It's a good. They, these guys can have a good match, but it doesn't mean shit because they don't like make it mean shit. Mm-hmm. They're just they're having matches. They're not feuding. <laughs> they're not you know. There's no intensity in this. Yeah. And that's that's what drives me nuts. It's like you've got three hours on Monday to get something going, and you send out a mannequin and saws, and it's just, it's, no. That's, that's, that's what gets the people going. <sighs> I mean, they, they look for cheap laughs is what it, what it is, rather than, you know, interesting stories and something to get people buzzing. Like, oh, man, did you see the way that Ambrose tore that mannequin apart? That's totally what he's doing on, to Rollins this Sunday. <laughs> no, it just, it's, it's bad. But, uh. Yeah, man, that was awesome. Yeah? Was it? So, I don't know. I just, I would like to see, you know, the minor titles mean something. And. Maybe in the future. Not just have them thrown together. You know, whatever. You go from. U.S. title to Intercontinental title. You go from Intercontinental title to U.S. title and just switch them up. But what can you do? So uh, so that takes us into the, uh, the main event, a three-on-two handicap match, which was the main event uh, a few weeks ago when Ambrose uh, brought the uh, hot dog cart. Hot dog. Hot dog cart. Hot dog. So um, I don't know. Uh, Kane, Orton, and Rollins end up getting the victory. Anything to really take away? What did you think about the matchup? Um, I don't really have anything to say about it. I mean, I don't know. Who, who do you think's going to main event? You think they're going to put the Cena Orton match with the main event? More than yeah. likely, yeah. yeah. As it's the one with most importance, the number one contender. Well, match. see, they sort of, well, they sort of made it feel like in the end that they were maybe Rollins and Ambrose May fucking main event. I don't know. It's yeah. weird. I could see them doing either. I, I mean, I think it's probably safe Still to say there. that Orton and Cena, but I don't know. What? It felt like it felt like Ambrose and um, Rollins were the main storyline, though. You know, what mm-hmm. I mean? but it was a uh, it was a street fight match, and uh, you know they they were pretty calm about it for the for the first half of the for the matchup, and then they brought out the the weapons and stuff like that. But I don't know. Then the Hell in a Cell lowered down, and everyone was down with the exception of Rollins, who gave the curb stomp to Orton, climbed up the top of the cage, and was like, Ah, I did it. So, I don't know. Overall thoughts on Raw? We go home show for Hell in a Cell. And I'm just really bummed about this Ambrose shit because I really just feel like the guy is good enough to be something, and I really just feel like th- as we progress, he gets like like faker and faker and mm-hmm. faker like every week. I just can't. You're fucking... making him too cartoony. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just real bummed. Next, about he's that. gonna come out with a giant mallet and you know dropping. Anvils on people's heads, pianos. It's a bummer, man. It is, but I think uh, it, I'm liking where Raw, like Rollins feels like what he should be, though. I mean, he feels mm-hmm. like, I mean, minus wanting to have a really awful nickname. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, he feels like he feels real to me. He feels like he he's doing what he should be doing, minus the warden shit that they had him set up. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like Rollins is Rollins is in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there you go. So that's the end of Raw, but now it's time because we got to get. Wait, what? How is it going? We got to hear. We got to make those picks. Hear those picks. Has it been that long? It it feels. We like got it. to hear those picks. We got to hear those picks. We got to hear those picks. So hell in a cell. Man, I had like we a, got to see those picks, man. Yeah, so uh, nude picks. Wow, no. Um, so Very yeah, it has it. it <laughs> I don't know. My my brain just shut off for a little bit. So uh, <laughs> Hell in a Cell taking place this Sunday, um, shaping up to be a hit or miss type of card, I guess. Like some hits, some misses. Um, Tyler, we'll let you kick things off. Uh, what's the the first matchup? That you would like to uh, to discuss. 
Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler. All right, Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler. This was actually announced uh, during the SmackDown, so slight spoiler alert, but you know we got to give our picks for it. So uh, it's actually going to be a two out of three falls for the Intercontinental Championship. So, uh, so what are your thoughts on this matchup, and who do you think is going to win? They've been hot shot uh, the title. Yeah, between Dolph Ziggler and Miz, uh, but I feel like. Cesaro's been losing a lot, though. Mm. I don't know if it really will help him to put the IC title on him. I just want the title on him, so I'm going to pick Cesaro. Okay, Cesaro to win. How about you, Doug? I'll also say Cesaro also. I don't know why. I'll Cesaro it. (laughs) I'll Cesaro that. Okay. I I don't really know why. I'm just going to pick it. Yeah, I think this has potential to be probably one of, if not the, match of the night. Um, You know, these these two guys have some pretty good chemistry. I think if they're given like a 20-minute matchup, they could. They're not getting twenty, maybe twelve. Well, it's two out of three falls. Oh, you're right. You're right. So you never know. Um, but I think Show these guys. Right. I think main these event. guys could probably. No, it's not going to be main event. Uh-huh. But uh, you know, it it probably will have people talking about it. Um, but I don't know. I think uh, I'll go Cesaro as well. You want Cesaro it? Cesaro it. Yes. So uh, hashtag. Hopefully, we'll we'll have that happen. So uh, so Doug, uh, you get to pick the uh, the next matchup. We got two Divas matches, the U.S. title, Big Show and Rusev, tag team titles, and two Hell in a Cell two matches. Two Diva matches. Two Diva matches. That's right. Big Show versus Rusev. Rusev versus Big Show. So, uh, all right, what are your thoughts on this one? We didn't really talk about the promo that Big Show cut. I thought he showed a lot yeah, of intensity. Kind of, yeah. uh, really good stuff from Big Show. Uh, you know, he got really emotional and turned that into rage. Um, so, I mean, it was good mic work from him. But uh, what but he didn't th- really say anything. He was like, <sighs> "The troops, man, the troops." Yeah, the troops, man, the troops. Don't like, cry. Really say never, never, never let them see you America. sweat. So, uh, all right. So, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on this matchup? Um, I feel like Rusev's better matches have been against the more athletic big guys, mm-hmm. and uh, Big Show for his size is a guy who's willing to sort of like bump around a little crazy and move yeah. a little bit, and so I feel like they can have a good match. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I'm sort of interested to see what they can do. I think Rusev wins. I think that's clear. Yeah. Um, you know, we haven't seen the guy who's going to beat Rusev yet. I mean, minus like a, maybe a Cena or something. The Rock. You know? Card angle out of nowhere. Oh. All right, so you're going Rusev? Yep. All right. Uh, how about you, Tyler? Same. Same? Rusev. Going with Rusev. Uh, I will pick Rusev as well. No, you won't. I will. That's who, I'm gonna, that's who I'm picking to win. Uh, let's knock out the uh, nope. the Bella matchup. Uh, Nikki versus Bree. Loser becomes the winner's personal assistant for a month. They put all that on the graphic. Too. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> Paragraph. I heard they. it was originally going to be, you're going to be my bitch for a month, but I guess they switched it up and... Didn't want to say bitch again, unless it was referring to, like, Stephanie McMahon. So, uh, Nikki versus Brie. Um, Brie's been on a roll with her matches. You know, two on threes, or two on ones, three on ones, hands with hot time behind her back. Seven on fours. Seven on fours, and whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, Twelve I, on two. I think, uh, yeah. So, I think uh, Nikki's going to end up winning this one. I think Nikki has to win. That's the only way the stipulation works. Because yeah. Bree's the baby face. She's the one that was pleading with her to drop it and just be make it make up, and they'll mm-hmm. just be sisters again. Unless Bree wins and is like, okay, Nikki, as my personal assistant, you're gonna go out on the farm. You're gonna do all this, you know, like because she's the glitz and glamour. Nikki's the type of glitz and glamour type of girl. So put her out on the farm and okay, we're gonna do this and organic and all the all the regular stuff. I think Nikki's got to win. Yeah, I think it's got to be her. I mean, that's the only way it works, You'll really. Give me a frappuccino. Yeah. Now, what's sad is that that would continue this storyline. And that's what bugs me the most. This isn't going to be the end. I agree. I'm going to pick Nikki. Nikki? All right. So all, Nikki! all three of us picking Nikki. Nikki! Nikki! So, uh, so there you go. So, Tyler, go ahead and knock out the, uh, the next one. Who are you going to. What's, what's the next matchup uh, you want to talk about? Seamus versus Ms. Dow. Seamus versus Ms. for the U.S. <laughs> title. Uh, unless they pull a switcheroo and give a Sandow or Ms. Dow or whatever you want to call them. So uh, who who are you picking to win this one? Miz. Miz? Okay, They're showing more focus on Miz right now. I don't know. I feel like he... Showing more focus on Ms. Dow. 
Miz Dow with Miz with I don't know I don't know. Sheamus has hasn't been, you know there's not too much focus. He, on yeah, him. they haven't done anything with him. I mean he's in this feud with, with Miz and Miz has gotten the upper hand, so I don't know. So you're Miz? going Miz? Yeah. Final yeah. answer? Yeah. All right. How about you, Doug? Uh, well, it's announced as Miz, and I'm assuming they're not going to swap Sandell in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to say Sheamus. Although I think where they're headed is Sandell's the guy who's going to get the job done, and then they're going to feed over the title. Like I think like Miz can't beat him. Sandell does beat him. Miz says, hey, that's my fucking title. Sandow says, no, that's my fucking title. Yeah. I think that's where we're headed. So assuming that they're not going to swap and it is going to be Miz versus Sheamus, I'm going to take Sheamus. Okay, so Sheamus to win. But we'll throw in a stipulation. If Miz Dow is the representative. I think it's, I think he could win then. Okay. Tyler? If uh, if Miz swaps for Miz Dow. So Miz it's Miz, Miz Dow versus yeah. Sheamus. Oh, well, you're picking Miz anyway, so. Uh, okay, so there you go. Um, I'll I'll do the same as you, Doug. Uh, I'll say Sheamus if it's versus Miz. Uh, if it's Miz Dow, then Miz Dow gets. I mean, the it feels win. like we're that's where we're headed, yeah. right? Like Sandow's the guy who's gonna get the job done, right? right. So, um, you know, because he did get the victory on Raw, so right. you know you can't can't really put it past him to to do something like that. So, so there you go. Um, all right, Doug. What's the uh, what's the next match we'll be talking about? You got four remaining. Uh, let's go with the tag titles. All right, Usos versus Gold and Stardust. So, uh, this one, I don't know. I'm gonna say the uh, Dust plus. Brothers retain. Dust Brothers. All right. Um, I'll go with Golden Stardust to win as well. I mean, they just they don't have anything going on. Neither do the Usos. So, and there's no other real tag teams going on right now, unless you count, you know, Slater Gator or Los Matadores, which. They're not featured on, and they're, you know. And that's a damn shame. <laughs> yep. So, uh, Golden Star to us. How about you, Tyler? Same. Same? All right. So, pretty unanimous so far. Um, let's go into the uh, the Divas Championship match. No, we're not doing John Cena versus Randy Orton. It's my turn to pick. AJ Lee versus Paige for the Divas Championship. Um, I mean, does it really matter at this point? Nope. I mean, if AJ Lee wins, then presumably it'll be the end of the feud. If Paige wins, nope. it'll continue. It will still continue no matter what. Yeah, it could still continue. But if AJ Lee wins, and if and if they're doing something female-wise for the Wyatt promos that have been going on, where they're talking about she and female and Sister Abigail or whatever, um, maybe that could be a future. They could be bringing someone in to go up against AJ Lee, although I haven't heard anything. I'm just purely speculating. Um, I don't know. I'm going to go with AJ Lee to win. How about you, Tyler? I'm going to go with any mini money mo. <laughs> Page. Page. All right. Doug? <laughs> I mean, I really feel like it could go either way and not make a fuck of difference. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, but, this, but this is like whoever side you're on on this one. <laughs> well, if I pick AJ, then you and I are totally in league with everything so far. And mm-hmm. Tyler's in league. Tyler's the one out. All right, fuck it. I'll say it. All right, AJ. All right, good deal. So, um, <laughs> Tyler's turn to pick. So, uh, John Cena versus Randy so Orton. Seth Rollins versus Dean Aaron. Oh, okay. You want to talk about John Cena versus Randy Orton? Yeah. Okay. So, John Cena versus Randy Orton, number one contender match inside the Hell in a Cell. Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Interesting choice. Any particular reason why you're going with that? Um, I, I thought they were, they wanted to do a while back Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar. Mm hmm. This is, a, this is, I guess, their chance to do that. Okay. It's a fresh matchup. I know it's Hill versus Hill, but I don't give a fuck. They might return <laughs> him um, face anyway. So. Yeah. It's quite possible. All right. How about you, Doug? Well, I think that's entirely possible because, A, they do seem like they want to turn Orton face. Um, B, it would be a reason to get Brock back before... Uh, the Rumble. You could mm-hmm. probably do it at Survivor Series, which is, I think, supposed to be in St. Louis, which is Randy's hometown. So he could be a big baby face by Survivor oh, yeah. Series in his hometown to face Lesnar. I was you know, about to say, they also wanted to do, what, John Cena versus Seth Rollins, too. So so I think Orton is a big possibility. I mean, yeah. it, to be a big baby in his hometown against the bring Lesnar back to fight him. Survivor Series is a big pay-per-view. Yeah, I don't think it's out of the question, but it feels and they like could always throwing an audible, have Orton win, and then Rollins cash in on him. 
Yeah, I don't think that. See, I don't. But if I mean, if their big plan is for someone to dethrone Lesnar at WrestleMania, then they can they got to start establishing that. Well, see, I feel like. If I don't think there's any chance that Hell Orton beats Lesnar. No. Uh no matter what. Okay. So I wouldn't see it going that way. I don't think Orton is a guy. I think you waste a Lesnar loss on Orton. I think yeah. it's a total waste. Um I, but I could I could just as easily see them doing Cena like cuz he did he got his say his rematch fucked up and mm-hmm. like he can say now I've got my fucking no, I got another shot. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm sort of torn. I think. It yeah, away. it's you know, I mean, Tyler made a lot of sense. I was originally thinking uh, Cena, but he started spitting those words out and uh, causing self doubt. Um, no, nah. um, oh, Warden's a good pick. I, yeah. I think this is a toss up. I mean, it really is. Um, you know, you could have Cena Lesnar three for this year, um, or you if could, that's the case. You think they hold it off or they do it at Survivor Series? Oh man, they, um, they gotta fucking do Survivor Series. I feel like, I feel like it's, it's too big, big of a gap. Four, yeah. It's too big of a gap to go to, to Rumble without or them. TLC. Just I don't know. I just don't know. And if I don't know, maybe they will do it. At, you know, have Orton fight in St. Louis. I mean, I'm, it's a tough call. Yeah. What are you gonna go with? I don't know. I feel like. You, I think you can still get Cena back to contender by Rumble if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And if you go Orton, then you've got an excuse to bring Lesnar back in just to remind everyone he's there. Fucking get the belt back on your fucking programming. Mm-hmm. And still, I don't think there's any way Orton wins, so it keeps Lesnar strong. Yeah. So I think it's a good pick. You know what? I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to go tell her. I'm going to say Orton wins this. Okay. Um, And is a big baby in his hometown, but ultimately loses. I don't see a cash happening at the Survivor Series or whatever yeah. they do. It. Or maybe another tease in or something like that. But uh, I think I'll go with Orton as well. Um, seems to make a lot of sense. Good job, Tyler. So that takes us in the, uh, the final matchup. Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. Hell in a cell. Um, probably the best built feud that's going right now. And that's really not saying a whole lot since we just crapped all over what Ambrose has been doing. Um, yeah, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. I, I don't want people to think we don't like Ambrose. We just yeah. don't like how he's being presented. Right. I, we like him, and we feel like there is so there's much better. So, yeah, there's so much more potential that right. they're just wasting in uh, in doing this. So, um, I don't know. Doug, who, who are you going to go with on I that think, one? Especially if you're going to get Warden, I think you have to go Ambrose because that's your 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 big baby face. I just trailed off. Your big baby face payoff of the night. Yeah. I think it makes sense to go that way if you're going to go Warden. Okay. Uh, plus, they sort of like to... Rollins has been booked pretty strong as the uh, the case holder. They usually book those guys really shitty losing all the time. Yeah. But he hasn't had any high-profile matches. He's only beating people on Raw and SmackDown. So... And they usually like to job those fuckers in big-time matches anyway mm-hmm. to create a sense of doubt that they can't win or some bullshit. Yeah. Which doesn't make any sense to me. But <laughs> I would suspect that they would do that with him anyway. So I'm going to go Ambrose. All right. Tyler, how about I'm you? I'm going to go with Ambrose. It seems like Seth Rollins always gets one on Ambrose. And plus, they're really, really high. I feel like they're really high on him. Now there's they're nowhere. Really pushing them. Now there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide for yeah. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Finally gets his hands on him. I'm sure Kane will make an appearance, but... I'm going to go with uh, Dean Ambrose as well. So there you go. Uh, let us know what you think in the uh, in the comment section on uh, who you think is going to be victorious. But uh, just got to say, those were some great picks. Those, those were, were some, some great, great picks. picks. Those, those were, were some, some great, great picks. picks. So uh, with that being said, picks. it's time to go. What? No. Uh, it's time to go on some of the hot topics. Uh, do we have any uh, WWE 2K15 no. news, Tyler? What's um, uh, What's going on this week? They have Got some new mm-hmm. screenshots. Yes. They show uh, Corey Graves, mm-hmm. some more of Adrian Neville, Sami Zayn. Good stuff. Uh, I guess just uh, I want. I called GameStop uh, a few days ago. I was like, hey, do y'all still have that Hulk Hogan edition? Mm-hmm. They said, uh, no, you can't pre-order them, but you can buy it from them, but you have to pay it all up front. That's stupid. And they'll send it to you, so you can't pay it. It's a hundred dollars. I mean, they the, even have them at the store. They're gonna mail them to you. Yes. 
I don't from trust their factory, the from their factory. So you probably won't get it that day. I don't know. But uh, and we know after that whole debacle from like two years ago. <laughs> well, I, I was just about to say that. that. This is from the inventory from GameStop. It's not from the company. Oh, uh, I got you. We Maybe ordered... you can do it from Amazon or something. Yeah. Get Noah to buy it. Because I, I want it. But did, my... we, did we buy from THQ or, THQ. From the, or WWE THQ, Shop? Because we bashed the shit out of THQ. Yeah, I know we bashed the shit out of them, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if we ordered from WWE Shop or from THQ Shop. Well, I just got the regular edition, um, and I've already paid for the season. So pass. it comes totally wasn't worth it when we did it either. Two <laughs> versions of Hulk Hogan, NWO, and regular. Two versions of Sting. They said that's when you pre-order. So yeah. I wonder if you buy the Sting it, you is saw. pre-order. So I wonder if they still give you Sting if you buy it straight from that. I would think they would. Um, that's a gamble. A piece of uh, WWE mat. I think. Woo. Uh, and the only cool thing, and it's really not that cool, it's a special edition. What's those figures called? Those vinyl figures? The pop vinyl. Pop vinyl. You get one of Hulk Hogan. It comes with uh, a, like a special uh, box. And it looks mm. cool. It really does. But that's that's about it. Not as cool as my glow-in-the-dark Groot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Is it the flower pot one? No. They're going to be selling those. Yeah. I'm just... It's uh, interesting. I guess I get my PS4 Friday and just whoop whoop. I I can't wait for it. it it's still like a far. Aw- it's it's gonna be here before you know it, but still far away. No, I'm talking about uh, WWE 2K15. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna oh, so reserve. what are you not gonna? Are you like just gonna get the regular edition? I probably. I don't know. I mean, Hulk Hogan's not that big of it. I mean, I'm a person that wants all the characters, but they're eventually gonna release him on the yeah. I, I want to get Sting for sure off the bat. Like, well, think, well that's pre-order. I think yeah. the question is, uh, do you want that fucking figure or not? That's pr- that's the question. The no, bo- he wants, it, he it wants looks that cool. little piece of mat. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. The apron or whatever. Uh, that's what he wants. How much is it? Like a hundy? Hun- yeah, a hundred. Oh, yeah, and, and a signed picture of Hulk Hogan. But that could be bullshit. Remember that flimsy rock picture we got at one time? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's bullshit. Well, he said uh, during the roster reveal or whatever, he was like, no, nah, this is legit. Like, they sent me, like, you know, 50 boxes filled with nothing but pictures of me for to sign. He was like, my hand is done. The rock one was just the fucking stamp, you could tell. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll, I'm, I'll think about it, though. Um, I'm also... Just get I know regu- this is completely... Save, save a little bit of cash, get the regular edition, and go ahead and buy the season pass. You end up coming out, you know. It's like, do I really want that figure? Though? But that figure, yeah. uh, I mean, and you could probably it, buy me, that off. Of in eBay my opinion, or something. this is the coolest edition they've ever had, which pretty much is still not s- saying much because mm-hmm. they've had crappy special editions. There was that one year where only the PlayStation version had the uh, Hell in a Cell, the Hell in a Cell case, case like a for it. Yeah. That's pretty much it. But like, I want a legit like special special edition figures those pop vinyl figures are all right in my opinion yeah but something cool or like maybe like statue yeah or statue everyone's doing statues why wwe statue like randy orton rko and random person or something <laughs> I don't know. Uh, i'm not sure uh but heck you could even make it like a corner piece or something with i know this like, is a little bit like it. it's gonna be completely different but um i'm also gonna be getting nba 2k15 they got my career mode and all that stuff on there you know i got that same fucking shirt and Gray instead of blue. Yeah. That's cool. I like it. Yeah, it's a good shirt. Good stuff. Um, I'll focus on the PS4 Friday. Yep. You're almost there, man. You're but, almost uh, there. But there's not too much news. Like, every day at work, like, the first hour I get there, there's really not too much going on. I always check what's going on with WWE 2K15. Like, <laughs> I check every single day. Nice. That sounds weird. I'm obsessive now about this. Cause I just can't wait to play, like... All the stuff I've been hearing and like or reading and stuff, there's this guy who like tried to demo. They like, they've changed their core mechanics. They have and stuff. And oh, another thing I've noticed, y'all saw the video they put. Po- I posted on our on our uh, website yeah. IGN, mm-hmm. uh, the making part two. Just like how everyone moves and stuff. Like I saw. Did y'all see the lock between uh, Randy Orton and uh, Roman Reigns? Like his oh, hair, oh, yeah, thing the lock he up. Sent, but I didn't, yeah, like he's remember. like I know this is a little his hair, man. Like sometimes when you're playing with guys long hair, it kind of goes to their neck and yeah. stuff. This didn't, and it looked like realistic as fuck, and it's just how it was moving and stuff. I was mm-hmm. like, that looks awesome. It should look so, pretty good. So 
hopefully the play is is equal. Just like all good. the moves they're doing, like Sami Zayn's here, he ran from the side, he goes through the goes through the turnbuckle. Yeah, and does that. Do Bet that's a cutscene. Yeah, you have to trigger the move and it doesn't do a cutscene. Hate that. Well, that's not so bad. Yeah. But uh um, yeah, but otherwise you'd have to like what run to the corner and then hit like a grapple a running grapple to get through. That would be weird. Yeah. yeah. Um I'm just excited to like have an NXT roster. Mm -hmm. That just that's just it's just different. And then if they're Switches doing universe mode or whatever. One thing I didn't like about universe mode. Uh, for 2K14, and I know they're gonna add on each year and all that stuff, but like you can have different brands and stuff. Yeah. So you have Raw and SmackDown, and I'm you have a pay per view. You can only have two brands on one pay per view. Hmm. You can't have three or four. I'm interested to see how the uh, NXT guys' entrances are are used. You know, like if, if they show up in Raw or on a pay per view or something like that. Yeah. Like, is it gonna be the same, or are they gonna mix it up a bit? Or see, I'm not familiar with certain. Like, I haven't been watching NXT. I don't know what Corey Graves' entrance is or whatever. Or mm -hmm. I don't uh, think it matters unless it's like Tyler Breeze or uh, what's his name, Sami Zayn. No, 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 no. Tyler what's... Breeze is yeah. He does the the cell phone. Adrian Neville with a pointing up. And no, 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 no. What's uh, what's his name? Is he gonna have like the party follow him or adam oh adam rose. adam rose he's dlc that's true they're gonna have yeah i was wait think they is would... tyler breeze in the game no he's not okay that's what was, that's what i'm saying like i don't think the entrances matter unless it's adam rose or tyler breeze really mm. i mean i would like, say, as far I would as, like, say they maybe... would they would throw that in there you know the wyatt family entrance looks pretty good have you seen that uh, I don't think so. They do. They did the live action because they weren't in there last year like that. Right. They did the live action where they strikes up the match, holds up the lantern, puts it in. He's like, "We're here," <sighs> like that. And then you know, lights Maybe go like out. on the on the Tron. And then, yeah. Well, right. like you know, the whole the whole screen is going to show that. Right. And then it's going to go out, and then you're going to see just white lights going like this. You know, going back and forth, and that's the the fans holding their holding their lights up right. and then they come out with the with the lantern and all that. Is there a rocking chair and everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It there looks like it'll be pretty uh, good. And there's also going to be one for Harper and Rowan where they do where they do that. <laughs> yeah. That lame song. Yeah, but the thing that annoys me about that is that they got that the child singing whole world in his hands. Yeah. I'm like, god, I wish I could like skip that part. That's how they were doing it though. Yeah. But like just go straight to the guitar or something, you know. That sucks too. So. Yeah. Some guy uh it sucks less. <laughs> yeah. Kind of reviewed <laughs> the my career mode demo, whatever. Mm -hmm. He was saying that the uh, the faces look incredibly detailed, but the bodies are more like are more akin to plastic action figures. Yeah, I can buy that. But you know, they're gonna have like sweat and stuff. And the tattoos. There. Yeah, it's just everything I've seen, even the the leak the gameplay from different places it just looks looks good you yeah. know and like i feel like time is just going by slow it's just <laughs> it's just that's the beginning of next month and we're yeah. at the end of this month yep and but it's just it's just so fucking slow or you could just go get the 360 or ps3 version now like you know whenever it comes out play that and get used to it yeah and then you can just go out and the buy another game but the bad part is <laughs> you can't sell at gamestop because they don't give you shit yep oh you they may give you a good amount. It's brand new. Second and Charles give you more. So, uh, so there you go. So, uh, time to move into the Q and A portion of the show. Your questions, our answers. First question, and only question, coming to us from Thomas Drabelosan. Drabelosan, Drape Drabelosan. Hey guys, I've been listening uh, back. To, I've been yeah, exactly. Uh, I've been listening. I've been back listening to, for years, and I want all my fucking wasted time back. Oh, that would hurt. But uh, I've been listening back to last week's podcast, which is a great pick-me-up when I have some not-so-good days at uni. What and, a sweetheart. I know. Oh, Sorry you're having a tough day. But um, And the discussion of John Dynamite has got me in a whole wrestling games mood. Oh, cool, 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 cool. cool. Aber, did you see the t-shirt design for yeah, John Dynamite? Yeah, he said to me. I forgot to respond. <laughs> but yeah, he awesome. said But, like, that would be so cool to create that. But, like... I am the, those features. The last game, it's hard to create, like to mm -hmm. draw that stuff on yep, there. Exactly what you want. Oh my gosh, it takes time. But yep. if I if I had to, man, I do have the patience. But I would mess up. You and got the time. Time to do that. That yep. would be pretty cool. There you go. So uh, <laughs> Thomas says I have a few qu uh, queries for you this week. First of all, I need a detailed description of John Dynamite, as I'm hoping to, with your blessing, of course, Tyler, create him when I get WWE 2K15. First off, 
Do you, does he have your blessing? You can't drop him now, Amber. Hey, you, you got other people. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can create him and try someone else. Like, someone you can new. have a whole stable, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of felt discouraged from last game because I couldn't get him Put right. Put him in the he Legends looked, division. He looked too, like, cartoony. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, I don't want to play with him anymore. Well, would you have, would you give Thomas your blessing to create him? Yeah. Okay. Good. You can't. Now, now you give can't a detailed description. I have different, like, the two versions that stick out in my head. Like, sometimes White boy dreads. Like, White well, boy no, dreads. Sometimes. Matt Hardy pants. Or must. Yeah. White boy dreads. Matt Hardy okay. pants. Okay. Absolutely. That's, That's the original same. attire, like, from back <laughs> in the day. It was, he did have the dreads sometimes, but uh, he did have long hair, and sometimes he would have short hair. That one year you uh, gave him, like, the shortcut with the little poof in the front? Yeah, I did that. Uh, he was, Sometimes he would have, that like, a... Jericho year. He cut yeah, yeah. He has a vest, like a regular uh, vest that opens in the middle or whatever, but mm-hmm. it wasn't closed. Sometimes he had a, a bulletproof vest. Uh uh, his original attire always had Matt Hardy uh, version one uh, oh, red yeah. pants. Uh, he would have the uh, wrist uh, or no arm tape or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was like the wrist tape, but it the was high like ones. The high ones. Ah. But then so about mid forearm. Yeah. Then okay. later on, he would like evolve. Did it, did he had wait, gloves too. Did it did it gloves sometimes start? he had gloves. Okay. Sometimes fingerless had, like yeah, leather fingers, gloves yeah. with the high wrist guard. Sometimes. Tape. Sometimes. Uh, and then. He evolved into like a regular guy with a haircut, and uh, sometimes he had the vest, but he had like black shorts on, like where mm-hmm. I would wear. And he, oh yeah, he would always wear chucks, so he also <laughs> wrestled on chucks. Uh, okay, that's with all the tires. Maybe uh, we can, maybe we can get a couple screenshots to, to Thomas or something. We're gonna have to get a bunch of screen grab, but we okay. have to go through all like your you games. Put, <laughs> you can put, you can put like each version of the wrestling games that you have of him on there. That's what I was just, about like, to say. My goal, okay, in. This week coming up or the next two weeks, I'm gonna try to break out my PS2 and from PS2 all the way to like Xbox 360. We can see the evolution. I will, of I will show you John Dynamite, and I will send the pictures to you, and you have that app to put them all yeah, together, right? Put them all together, yeah. and and we can uh, we can even do a make, you know. We can turn this into a contest oh if we wanted gosh. to. You're trying to, like, you're trying to make the next, break down my fucking character. Make dog. the next evolution of John Dynamite. No, it, it's it's not legit if it doesn't come from Abear. I'm well, sorry. Well, he's gonna obviously make it, but like, let's see who. Hey, would I get gave the permission clo- him. Uh, gave permission to uh, Thomas. Thomas to to do what he well. No, he, he wants to recreate you your recreate? vision in his yeah. game. So okay. here's what I'm thinking. You know, Tyler makes his next version of John Dynamite, right? Okay. So we see the pictures of previous John Dynamites and have people who have WWE 2K15 to make their own thoughts on where you're going to take it. So, like, they'll look at, okay. This Non-canonical, the... though, huh? doesn't count. It's not, like, the real version. Right. He's going to make the real version. Okay. That's what I'm worried about. I so, don't want to get a false John right. Dynamite. Well, no. <laughs> okay. Well, see, this is. <laughs> Cheap knockoffs, motherfuckers. See, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because I'm not going to be able to gleefully bash John Dynamite <laughs> if it doesn't come from Tyler's psyche. Right. But see, this is what I'm this is what I'm getting at. Okay. We'll take a picture of each of the John Dynamites <laughs> of the past. Okay. Yeah. So we can so people will see what changes were made, how how he evolved as the years went on. Yeah. Okay. We'll send that picture out for the people to see. Mm-hmm. Say, here's John Dynamite through the years. You make what you think. 2015 edition John Dynamite is going to look like. They make it, submit it in. You don't see any of them. You make John Dynamite. Whoever gets closest to uh, to your interpretation. I think I might start on that tomorrow. I, I don't have nothing. I think tomorrow night planned. So there you go. Work on that tomorrow. So whoever gets like whoever in your opinion gets the closest to what your version of John Dynamite is could win a prize. Would that sound okay? Me. Yeah. Okay, so now we have to see if people would actually do it. So if you're listening to this, well, they're gonna have to on 2K15. Yeah. Okay. Or you know, if you don't, if you're waiting for like Christmas uh, for 2K15, which is totally understandable, uh, maybe do it on 2K14, maybe, but 15 preferred. Yeah. And we could give people like two or three weeks to make it once once it comes out on the PlayStation Four and Xbox One. I think one time I also did those like pants, like I'm wearing these black shorts with like a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so would that be okay? Something like that? Like we yeah. give people two or three weeks 
you know, okay, release date for, you know, PlayStation oh, 4 give and like Xbox a few One. Weeks after. Give them like two or three weeks. And, that, and during that time, you are, you know, making John Dynamite. You are making the final product, the end all be all. So that'll give people time to make theirs, send it in, and then we can take a glance at it. And this is, I think it's so crazy that I thought of one guy when it first started and we could in ma- PlayStation one and I kept on creating them throughout the years. That's and weird. we could, and what we could do is we could I take don't have the PlayStation one game. And anymore. with Thomas's permission, we could take that design that he made, turn it into an actual t-shirt and send it to that person. How did that sound? Uh, Winner gets an official licensed one of one T-shirt for John Dynamite. Uh, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> we'll talk about it more. Yeah, we'll talk about it more later. So uh, it's a news at eleven on that one. But uh, but yeah. So there you go. Um, secondly, Thomas asked, uh, I want to <laughs> know if you could reintroduce any feature from a. If patch- y'all are shipping fucking T-shirts, you guys are shipping fucking T-shirts <laughs> this time. Okay. I shipped too many fucking T-shirts yeah, across this world. Yeah. I agree. So uh, he says, secondly, I want to know if you could reintroduce any feature from a past wrestling game to 2K15, what would it be? I know exactly what he's going to say, and I'm going to say it. Create my answer. Oh, that well, I agree with you. You say it. I know exactly what you, because you always say it. (laughs) He's just a common man. I I, I I guess he wants the American Dream Dusty Rhodes to be in there. I thought you said what what entrance music do you want? Is that no, what you no said? reintroduce any feature from the past, oh from the past. I thought games. they said what entrance music do I want? I was like, <laughs> I want fucking. <laughs> I was just in my mind, like I was only halfway listening because I was like in my mind, I was like, I'm not fucking shipping t-shirts this time. You guys are. <laughs> then he just like start singing. I was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, 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 just yeah. roll with it, man. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh. We talk about all the time. I know create a saying. title. Create yeah. a title. Yeah. Create Didn't a title. they do that? They did that in in fourteen. They brought no. it like you could name it, but you couldn't make the title. Yeah, you whatever. couldn't make it. Yeah, you what? Can. You can't create a belt. Yeah, you can. Cause I made one. Huh? In two K fourteen. Wow, I didn't even do. You that. like selected the plates and the belt and everything. Yes. Hmm. I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. We all gotta go back and play. We only talked about that for like and five years. Search it. Uh, one thing I did like, and I don't know if they would bring it back because the brands are back together, but I love the ones where the brand split was like the manager hey, mode and all that. Uh, that hey, cool. you know, like you're Ric Flair or whatever. Like, I want this person on my roster. Yeah, manager mode. Yeah, then you walk backstage. Bischoff like, versus before. Flair. Yeah, you walk backstage, talk to people, uh, go to the event. Hey, I'm gonna talk to this person. I want to switch to this brand. I love doing that. That's cool. Very nice. So uh, I don't know any features that I'd like to see come back. Um, one thing I'd like to see introduced or something, have more than six players available on, on the screen at once. It's always like yeah. anytime there's a Royal Rumble or something like that, it, it always stops at six. Oh, and that bugs the hell out say, of me. I was about to say, there's also one match that they have. I wish I would bring back they used to have. It was a, a triple threat tag team match. They don't have that. I wish I would bring that back. Hmm. Interesting. All right. And um, thirdly, if you were to appear in a wrestling game as you, what would you want your entrance to be? Keep up the fantastic work, fellas. I look forward to your responses. Is this where I seen Common Man Boogie? Absolutely. <laughs> Just rewind a little bit. <laughs> you can't now. Jesus is coming, man. Okay. Uh, what kind of entrance would you have? Because I have a feeling that he's about to like he's gonna be making us. <laughs> I just I'm getting this vibe. You know what? I don't know why, don't but I, I, that, I you know what just don't came to my mind or whatever. He's gonna have you and John Dynamite team up to go up against myself and Doug. They're you know why? Do I don't job. know why I would do this, but uh, <laughs> this is so goofy. Huh? Job do this? You mean? Absolutely. There's it's so goofy. I don't know why I would like do like a. Uh, was it enjoy the silence or whatever something like that and then i don't know why it pops in my head what was that jeff hardy thing where he would always go like this <laughs> the pelvic thrust <laughs> with the arms in the air i don't know why i thought that shit's hilarious i would like to do that <laughs> where he's like the, throwing his arms he has like that john symbol. dynamite's entrance no 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 <laughs> you he get didn't real know. serious no, about that was, that is not his 
<laughs> no, no, no. He did. He the fucking fashion. wiped it. I was like, no, that's not how John rolls. <laughs> <laughs> now he's on the floor for laughing. <laughs> <laughs> the Depeche Mode song thing is, but not. Reach out and touch me. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> dum, dum. That's, that's his uh, yeah, intro. How about you, Doug? What would, uh, what would your entrance be? Not necessarily entrance theme, but like, how would right, you right. come <laughs> down to the ring? Yo, yo. Bushwhacker? No. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, I got this randomly thought, like, you know how you can create a character and then he's like a guy, but like give him a girl like in. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're going to do this year? All right. So I, I, I don't really know. I don't know what kind I, of when I, like whenever I'm making someone like, like a creator wrestler, I usually go for the generic ones. Like I try not to give him like an established one. Right. I like to switch it up a bit. Uh, like, I don't, I don't want it to all be the same of this one Brooklyn, character. Like, Brooklyn. You know, when he comes out, he's doing something. Whatever. But I don't want it to be, like, too distinguishable, you know? Right. Um, I did one a couple years ago that was, like, really solid. Um, but I can't remember how it went. They changed it. It seems like they change each year. They're, uh, yeah. they're um, not superstar one, but they're generic ones. They kind of change, change them a little bit. Yeah. I usually go for the low key ones, the ones that are clearly not someone else's. Yeah. Well, like I think I did one one year where I wanted to make it seem like they just appeared out of nowhere. And so I had the Rey Mysterio entrance where he pops out of the ground. Um, but I did the Undertaker's lightning bolt. So as soon as the bolt struck, he was there. So I mean like cuz the cuz the flash was so bright that you don't some, see him jump some up. Some of the entrances are so stupid like out. the one the guys on a cell phone he's just walking to like, Yeah, oh, some what? of them are like who does this? I don't know. Oh. I mean that I mean that's different. Yeah. It's definitely different. The zombie one. Yeah, those, there are some that are weird on there. I'd like to see more variety of, of stuff like that. Like I know you can only fit so much into a video game but John Morrison. Yeah. You know, John Morrison. So, um, but there you go. But thanks for the question, Thomas. We certainly appreciate it. Drop Don't forget to submit your questions on our Facebook page, WBS Podcast, our YouTube page, WBS Video, and let us know what you think is going to happen during uh, Hell in a Cell. Don't forget to check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast. Everybody get a PS4 or get Xbox PS4, One. No, PS4, because that's what we're all on. Yeah, we're but, all on that. Well, but I'm not saying you yet. Me. but Well, I will. Yeah. It's all about that PS4. That base. No trouble. Um, <laughs> you can find us on Stitcher, Beyond Pod, and I always want to say Beyond Plod, uh, <laughs> and Player.fm. Yeah. Search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Get PS4. Uh, Twitter at WNS Podcast, at WNS Spot. underscore Daniel, at Tyler underscore Aber. Make toast. Make toast. So there you go. For the podcast crew, I am Daniel Heron. Oh, shit. I'm Tyler Aber. Oh, uh, yeah, you are. I'm Doug. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you all next week. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.